I'm Patrick Bailey from whiteboardcoder.com. I'm currently taking a Coursera course called Introduction to Electronics by Georgia Tech, from Georgia Tech. I've always wanted to get more into electronics, learning how to make them and solder them and build them. Um, I have a background in mechanical engineering and computer science. Uh, so recently I bought a MyDAC to go with this course. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to unbox this and try to figure out what I can do with it. Okay, so first I'm just going to unbox this guy here. Let's see what we got. So first we got the my deck here. Now I saw somewhere online it's a good idea to keep this because they did a nice thing for you here. You can actually put a breadboard in here. So it's kind of nice to store this and bring it around with you, I guess. Uh, so anyway, there's the my deck. All the connectors. Uh, now I got this from Studica.com for two hundred dollars, and it has the MyDAC, and I believe it has a student version of LabVIEW, MultiSysm, and UltaBoard. I'm sure I pronounced those wrong, but I guess we'll figure out what those are. So there's my software. Uh, some instructions, quick start guide, and then all our stiff. So I got a. So you got a screwdriver in here. Got a couple of got a couple of probes. Looks like we connect the probes back in there. Got my USB cable. Looks like I got an audio cable. And then I got this guy. Which, yeah. which I believe just plugs into here. Now, truth be told, I was in here a little earlier, and I broke it. I don't know how I'll fix this, but we'll see. I kind of snapped off this little plastic piece, so maybe. Hopefully, it's not too much of an issue. Probably is, but I'll have to fix it or find another one of these. But I know this plugs in here, and then you can connect all your wires in there. So uh, now on to the next thing, I got to install this software. So I'll record how to install the software, and we'll go from there. Okay, now on to installing the software. Now there's an auto run that starts it, but I kind of like to copy the software over just in case later on I got to install it later. So I just kind of keep it on my hard drive. So I just copied everything from the disk. So let's see how well that works. Let's just click on setup.exe and see how it goes. Software suite. Okay, that looks like the right thing to click on. Okay, click next. I have serial numbers. Click next. Okay, on the back of the box, there's a serial number sticker. It's SN colon and then hopefully the serial number. So just enter that in, add serial number. It calls them. Good, we're good. Okay. So after you add your serial number, just click Next. Uh, LabVIEW. Okay, looks like I have a, a long installation time here. Okay, looks like it'll install everything now, so click Next. Uh, click Next. Okay, let's see what it does. Gathering products to be installed. I'm just going to let it go at it. No notifications. Click next. I'll just I'll just choose the default location. Next. Next. Accept the license. Next. Accept the license. Next. And next. A national instruments user profile is required to activate your product. Okay. I guess I gotta go create a new user profile. Create a new user profile, click next. Yeah, I just uncheck that one. Okay, click next. Click next again. Click next. 
Okay, now it's installing. Lab view. I guess I'll let it go at it. At this point, I'm going to add a timer. This timer will show how long the whole process takes. It's rather a long, lengthy process to install all these pieces of software. I'll speed up the video, but the timer will be um, will represent real time. There we go, looks like the first thing got installed. Now I'm on to the next thing. It took quite a while. At this point, my video kind of screwed up, and so the rest of the stuff got installed. I think, I can't tell exactly how much longer it took, uh, but after it all installed, this came up. It wanted to reboot my computer. So I rebooted the computer, and then I got to the next screen. Okay, I've rebooted my computer. And after it gets going, I this uh, this little guy pops up. So there's some updates, I guess, it found. So I'll just click View Updates. We have an update service. Okay. Guess there's a patch. So I guess I'll just choose all these upgrades and service packs. Let's see what we have. Yeah, that looks like a little, a little big. Yeah, I'll download it anyway. So I'll select these and I'll just install everything. That way we'll have the latest. It's only 2.2 .2 gigs. Okay. Okay, I'll let it install. And it's downloading. Okay, this will probably take a while, so I'll let it have at it. Okay, it finally got somewhere. Okay, so click next. Oh, and I gotta restart my computer. Okay, so I'll restart my computer again. Okay, and after that final reboot, I get this screen after I reboot. Uh, I looked at here, and I guess there's some more upgrades, but this is an upgrade I don't qualify for because I guess I have a student edition. Um, so I think I'm good. So now at this point I have this NI Max on my desktop. So I guess I'll start there. I'll open up this guy. Measurement Automation Explorer. Let's see what happens. So loading some plugins. Okay, there we go. Um, oh, this provides access to all my stuff, I guess. Oh. Ah, software. Okay, here's our software. Now, it's my understanding... Uh, I got a different package here. My package has LabVIEW and these other programs, but by default, you always get this uh, Elvis program. So let me open up this guy. Maybe. Okay, double-click on that. You can open.
See, it doesn't seem to open anything. So it just lists the programs I have. Okay, that's weird. Uh, hmm. Okay, well, I guess this just tells you what you have. I guess you can't do anything with it. So what's the point? Just, okay, just tells me I have it. Okay. So let me start it. I can probably just do a search for Elvis, I bet. Okay, there's the NI Elvis Instrument Launcher. Well, there we go. Our Instrument Launcher. So, what can we do? Let's start with a digital multimeter simple right okay we'll open that guy up and this is going to oh it launches a digital multimeter perfect uh, but I don't have my thing connected up yet so let me connect it up and I'll start a video showing it connected okay now I got this guy over here so I got this plugged in let me just plug it into here so I can take this protective seal off and then I've got these guys. So, what do we got? Voltage and amperage, okay, I think. So let me plug that in. Tips off. Let me go get something. Let me get a battery. Okay, got a battery. Now we pull up the digital multimeter. Let's see if it can do anything. I guess I gotta click run here. Run continuously. Let's see what we got. Ah, there we go. Voltage. I got something. Cool. And I guess I could reverse it. Let's see if we get negative. Negative. All right. Okay. I guess I could narrow the range. Change much. Oh, there we go. I got more detail. Okay. 1.343 volts. Nice. Okay. Let me take a, another digital multimeter I have right here. Get similar values. One point three five three. Over here. One point three four three. Okay, it's a little off. Let me see what else I can do with this guy. Okay, let me close this digital multimeter. Uh, let's do an oscilloscope and see what I can come up with. But I don't have anything really set up for that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Okay, well that's my first attempt at this. I got the digital multimeter working. Um, for me to get the oscilloscope or anything else working, I actually have to have something I gotta figure out the waveform generator and whatnot so I can actually make something that's kinda new to me. So, 
I think that'll be the, it for this video, and I'll make another one once I figure out how to make a waveform generator and use the oscilloscope.